Hello everybody and welcome to A Place for KP. I am KP and today we are going to be talking about the Grinnell Cemetery in Paris, France. So as usual, I am going to be working from some notes that I have here in front of me. So if you see me look down, that's what I'm looking at. And my sources for today, let's see, I have two major sources. One is the Paris.fr site, and the other is the Cimetière de France et d'ailleurs site. Perhaps I said that correct. <laughs> Uh, both of those will be um, in the description, and you can read about the cemetery there. This is like a smaller cemetery, so it was difficult to find a lot of information directly from France about this site. And of course, most of the cemetery information is going to be in French, so if you go to these two sites that I mentioned, you will need to translate the page into English so that you can read them. All right, so let's get started. The cemetery of Grinnell actually goes back to some time. In 1830, the village of Grinnell came into being as a commune, and I won't get into like the older history of this space, but we're just going to start sort of at this place in time since it's very close to the founding of the cemetery. In the early days, this village did not have its own cemetery. So people were buried in the Vaugirard Cemetery. And you can actually see a video that I did on a walkthrough of the Vaugirard Cemetery and some research about the Vaugirard Cemetery as well. I had a, a lot more sources for that cemetery than I do for Grinnell. Grinnell Cemetery was established in 1835 when the commune bought land for the dead in a place called Le Bel Noir. I'm not sure if I said that right. That's N-O-I-X. It's translated into English as the beautiful nuts. So the cemetery site says there are no prestigious names here, few monuments, and even fewer visitors. That doesn't speak very highly of this site. Personally, I really enjoyed visiting this cemetery, so I'm not sure what they mean. I will say that I didn't see a lot of visitors there. And of the famous names mentioned on, on the sites online, I didn't recognize any of them. That being said, I don't know how many French people do, so that's something to consider. I'm not French and I'm not familiar with a lot of older French culture, so I wouldn't really know anyway. Uh, this was definitely one of my favorite <laughs> cemeteries out of all the ones that I visited, and if I do ever return to Paris, I will visit this cemetery again. Uh, being a smaller cemetery, it's quite enjoyable to be able to walk through a cemetery in its entirety in less than two hours. So that's really nice. The commune of Grenelle was annexed into Paris in 1860. The cemetery is 0.64 hectares. That's about 1.58 acres. And it has around 1,000 graves. Now there's some like confusion online about the size of this cemetery. I saw one site, which I didn't even use in my sources because of this issue, but one site lists the cemetery as being 54 hectares or 64 acres. Uh, these numbers are all incorrect. This is really a small cemetery, a very small cemetery. And with, you know, around a thousand graves, there's no way that this is a 64 acre space, none at all. According to the Paris.fr site, there are several forbidden activities in this cemetery since it is still an active burial ground. It is forbidden to drink alcohol, to picnic, to use mechanical instruments, or to listen to music out loud. It is forbidden to feed animals by throwing or depositing food, um, to walk your pet regardless of if they are leashed or not 
to ride a bicycle, scooter, or handheld. I'm not sure what a handheld is, not sure what that means. To practice sports such as jogging, to organize fun activities such as treasure hunts and escape games. What an odd thought to have an escape game <laughs> in a cemetery. Huh. And the site goes on to say that these rules are in place to ensure respect for bereaved families. Um, it's, it's really interesting when I think about this part of it because... American cemeteries have a lot of different rules about what you can and cannot do. And then the general public has ideas about what you can and cannot do in cemeteries. And this varies widely across communities and states and uh, even like race. <laughs> um, so I, I, I know I'm, I'm part of several online cemetery groups for people who love cemeteries and people would have issues with most of these rules. So it's, it's interesting to see Parisian cemeteries having such strict rules. A sign at the cemetery states, even if the Grinnell Cemetery can be considered as a place for a walk, it is not a park or a square. Visitors and especially groups are reminded that the cemetery is above all a place of contemplation. Visitors are therefore asked to respect these places and not to disturb their tranquility. Another sign requests that visitors ensure the tranquility, decency, and respect of the space. So I think overall this is quite a different approach to what has become a recent trend in American cemeteries, as I kind of alluded to earlier. Uh, I've noticed many people asking, like, what is respectful or how is this action disrespectful? And there seems to be a question about what it means to be respectful or disrespectful. It appears that people want to do what they want to do. So they create these sliding scales of respect or disrespect, which allow them to continue their desired cemetery activities. And so... Um, yeah, I, I do believe that a lot of Americans might take issue <laughs> with some of these uh, rules in the cemetery for sure. And perhaps they wouldn't even know what it means to be respectful. Um, I've even seen people online stating that they have jumped over locked gates to enter a closed cemetery um, or that they have openly disobeyed the rules of the cemetery because the rules forbid an activity that the people actually want to do, such as perhaps grave rubbing or headstone rubbing. So, yeah, it's, it's just interesting to take note of the differences in our societies and our countries and how we approach uh, the, our different activities in the cemetery. Visiting Parisian cemeteries has been quite an impactful experience for me in this regard. It's really making me think about some of these questions. I'm actively online trying to explain to people why they should follow cemetery rules and, you know, what is respect and this kind of thing. Um, so it's, it's just quite interesting because a lot of American, our earliest American cemeteries were based on French cemeteries, specifically Parisian cemeteries. So visiting this uh, site and seeing these rules posted, not just here, but across all of the cemeteries, is really uh, eye-opening for me. It makes me wonder how we got to where we are versus how the French got to where they are in their rules for cemeteries. All right, so, um, you know, in, in the U.S., I think many cemeteries have like one or sometimes all of these rules. It really just depends on the cemetery. It depends on if the cemetery is historic or not, like if it's considered historic. It could also depend on if the cemetery has active owners, active descendant groups or volunteer visitors groups. It could 
depend on the quality of the headstones inside the cemetery. You know, historic cemeteries a lot of times have older headstones, and so it's easier to damage them. And some activities that might be okay with newer granite headstones are not okay with, like, for example, older ivory stones or something. I don't know. I don't know why I said ivory, like marble stones. (laughs) I don't think I've ever seen an ivory headstone. There's not much else to really say about Grinnell. I couldn't find a whole lot of other information, which is why I'm really focusing in on like their rules and a comparison of their rules versus U.S. rules. Uh, Let's see, the sites went on to say that Grinnell has 62 trees of six different species. Most of these are 100-year-old chestnut trees. And I do wonder if that name, the beautiful nuts, refers to the chestnut trees that are on the property. Uh, I don't, I'm not really sure. It's such an odd (laughs) name, so I'm hoping that it, it connects directly to the trees. And this number of trees, 62, some places said 60 trees, others said 62. I'm not sure of the number, but there are a lot of trees. Let's just say that. <laughs> if you look through the sources or you search online and you find, you know, information that differs from what I have here, it's okay. Um, we're not trying to be exact because no one online is exact. And the French government site says things different from the the uh, plaque that's right there at the cemetery so it it just depends on I guess who you want to believe but I'm taking these statistics and these numbers as like generalities rather than like exact numbers just to give you an idea there are a lot of trees this is a small cemetery Uh, the exact numbers aren't really that important in this case we just want to understand the type of space that we're dealing with There are some famous people buried on this site. I'm not really familiar with any of them. In the walkthrough that I did, I did uh, try to make a note of some of the famous burial sites that I was passing. Three of those in specific, one is the Regnault family, the other is Remondo and Schmid. Remondo and Schmid, they are sculptors And their burial sites also include like sculptures done by those people who are buried there. So that's quite interesting. And again, my sources are the Paris.fr site and the Cimetière de France et d'ailleurs site. Um, You can look up both of those. And that is pretty much all I have. As I said, there's not much online about this site that that I could really find in French or in English. Um, Most of the sites just repeat what's already listed on these two sites. So I take these two as like the sort of ultimate sources. Uh, You can see the links in the description to these. I'll probably also include like a Wikipedia link, perhaps. A lot of times, um, I don't like to use Wikipedia as a source, but a lot of times... For these cemeteries, Wikipedia has better listings of who is buried at the cemeteries, pictures of their headstones and things like that, and they're usually better than the French sites in that regard. I'm not sure why. Uh, And on that cemetière site, it's often interesting to read the comments. I can't remember on the um, Grinnell site how many comments there were, But I do remember on the Vaugirard Cemetery site there, um, the commenters are very detailed in their descriptions of headstones that they find, research that they've done on genealogies and um, connections to history and things like that. So in addition to just reading the article that's written at the site, I do recommend looking at the comments because they're quite informative and very interesting. All right, so that is pretty much it for Grinnell. This is probably the shortest research video I have done and will do on any of the cemeteries that I visited, probably because it's just a small space and it's not really having great renown like some of the other cemeteries. So yeah, but for me, 
it's probably one of my favorites and it is worth a visit all right thanks for watching i hope that you will continue to read my blog posts um, you can find those at www.aplaceforkp the link will be in the description and stay tuned for my next cemetery videos i should have two to three more coming out over the next three weeks all right thanks for watching a place for kp and i'll see you next time bye